Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We will not be offended by the term. Um, we embrace it. <laughs> um, that we, we host these um, every Wednesday morning live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and they are recorded, however, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always um, watch the recordings um, after the show. We have on our website, which I'm showing here, um, our archived Encompass Live sessions. All of our sessions we have had throughout the years, going back to the beginning in January 2009, are all available here on our website. We have the recordings, if there are presentations, any URLs, any websites, links, handouts, um, anything related to our sessions are all available here on the website. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, book reviews, training sessions, basically anything library related we are happy to have on the show. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, both the live show and the recording, so you don't have to have any sort of special password or special access to do any of it. It's just all out there for everyone. And we have commission, Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, and we do bring in guest speakers sometimes, which is what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is the library director from the North Liberty, Iowa Community Library, Dee Crowner. Hello, Dee. Hi, how are you guys? Yes, hi. We're, I'm doing good. I hope everyone else is. Um, we're doing really nice here in Lincoln. We're actually going to get up to possibly 50 degrees today, if it gets lucky. <laughs> I'm well, not we'll sure how you guys are. About 40 degrees, so yeah, uh, I'm that's, happy. That's good. That's better than a high of like 10. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> for us out here in the Midwest. So um, Dee is on the line with us this morning to talk about something that um, many libraries are doing, um, lots of different kind of special collections out there, but this is one that I've seen um, becoming either more and more prevalent or just more and more known about, um, cake pan collections. Um, to bake or not to bake is our topic, is our title this morning, a library cake pan collection. And Dee has this kind of collection at her library, um, a lot of them there, and she's going to um, share with us um, everything about it, how they got started, what they're doing with it, how it's going on. Um, and I'll just hand over to you then, Dee, to talk about what you guys are doing there. Hi, thanks, Krista. Yep. Okay, first of all, although I only live within five miles of Iowa City, my family would kill me if I didn't say, go Huskers. <laughs> Thank they, you very much. <laughs> they come from Seward, Nebraska, which is about okay. as close to Lincoln as you can get. So, mm -hmm. go Huskers. <laughs> And as Krista said, just feel free to jump in with questions anytime you would like. Um, and most of this information is going to apply to any kind of like unusual collection you want, not just Cape Pen collections. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to our webpage under NorthLibertyLibrary.org and look. We're just beginning to get pictures up of the Cape Pen collection, but you can go into the catalog part and just either type in. Um, Cake pan is a call number or a subject, and you'll find all. We have over 300 of them. Oh, so I see. It's here as an option over here too, in yep. in your uh, uh, limiters here. Right. Okay. We have over 300 okay. of them. They're listed alphabetically. But I'll talk about how you name a cake pan in a little while because that's kind of a strange thing that you have to do. Um, <laughs> I don't know about getting started. What we did was, originally we were in a 1,400 square foot library that was part of the city hall and fire station. And one of my, I had one staff, we, they used to be called Green Thumb People, but they're called Experience Work People now, had gone to another library and saw they had like 10 or 12 cake pans. And she came back and said, mm -hmm. hey, let's start a cake pan collection. I said, oh, yeah, OK, fine. Go ahead and do it. And I said, as long as it doesn't cost us anything, because at that time, our budget was not great. So she said, okay, well, we'll do it, and we'll do it by all donations. And at the end huh? time, I have, and I still do have an article I write in our local newspaper in the bookends every month, and I just started advertising that and got some notice on uh, radio stations and just kind of the media here all around the area. And that's how we started getting our cake pans donated. It was kind of slow at first, and we maybe had 10 or 12 of them to begin with. And then somebody went out of business and donated about 10 big, I mean, the garbage sacks full of cake pans. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thank goodness.
happened is about that time was about the same time we had were going to expand, and so we were able to make room kind of for the cake pans at that point. Um, uh, we didn't at that. You know, cake pans are kind of hard when you first get started to decide how you're going to catalog, how you're going to check them out, and everything. And all we did was have a real short list typed up and would check them out just by putting somebody's name down on the list, and we checked them out for a week. We weren't automated at that time either, by the way. So when we got automated, things became a little easier as far as cataloging cake pans. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. How long ago did you start this then? Oh, uh, I've been director here for 27 years, so I'd say uh -huh. probably at least uh, 20 years ago or longer. Oh, wow. Great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, when we moved into the new library, which is in a community center that houses the rec center, aquatic center, uh, conference center, and our uh, cable channel, um, we moved up. We thought we were big time. We moved from 1,400 square feet to 6,500 square feet and thought we had plenty of room for everything. However, we hadn't thought of how we were going to store the cake pans at that point. So we had the guys from our parks department on the, during the winter when they were less busy just build us some shelves on top of our bookcases to house the cake pans. There was no particular order to them at that point. People just had to come in and ask us if we had that cake pan and we could go in and check to see if it was in and then they had to wander over and see if they could find it. I'm telling you, it was pretty noisy with the clanking of the cake pans, but <laughs> it worked. We're not a quiet library to begin with. So with the automation, we found a way to do the cataloging, and we hadn't figured out how to put a barcode on the cake pans at that point. Mm -hmm. So we made a bunch of temporary ones on a plastic card and would check them out that way. Um, any collection like this becomes more sophisticated the longer you have the collection and you learn more, more about how to do it. So don't be afraid to start one no matter what. You, you learn as the, the longer you have the collection, the more you learn about how to deal with it. Um, so we went in and what we have done now is put a title in the, in the call number, which would be maybe Mickey Mouse, small Mickey Mouse space. Um, Christmas tree. We even have these huge cake pans donated that are like the wedding cake pans, like the oval and the square. So we do large oval, medium oval, whatever, just so that we can um, give a title to them. Um, and most of them are Wilton cake pans, and you can actually go online to the Wilton website and find out what they name the cake pan if you want to go that route. Sometimes their names are a little more convoluted and not as easy probably in the name for the patron to find in your system. Um, right now we have, have over 300 cake pans. We've gone through another expansion. We just finished our, had our grand opening in September. We went from the 6,500 square feet, expanded to 18,000 square feet. And at that point, we decided we were keeping the cake pan collection. We would never get rid of it. And as long as we were doing the expansion and had room, we actually now have a cake pan gallery that has have well, metal bookcases with slats that we slide the cake pans into. Uh, We've numbered each one of those little slots, like from 1 to 300 and something. And on the end of the bookcase, we have a, a rack that has lists all the cake pans in alphabetical order with the number. So you might find reindeer in slot 120. And that has we've been able to do that, fortunately. Now, a lot of people are not going to be able to do that right at first, because you're going to do this without having much room to start a collection like this, I am guessing. Um, 
like I said, mm -hmm. do yeah, an app, I, you figure it out. Yeah, I can see that this could be something that you definitely need to think about the space issues for. It's not right. just like a another row of books or something like that. No, You'd need definitely not. to figure out how to do it. And um, if you're going to need a uh, special kind of shelving or arranging or anything, I've seen yeah. some places where they've hang, hung them up above <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, we've even done it in those big plastic bags and hung them on, hung them on racks that way mm -hmm. at first. That is not convenient. Hanging mm -hmm. them is okay. I'm saying if you have bookcases, uh, we had um, a wall, blank wall, not a blank, it had the DVDs and uh, audiobooks and stuff on it, and we did the kick fans above that because it was kind of like AV material. And then uh, at that same time, our juvenile area was there, so the bookcases were 63 inches, so we, our park, parks guys just built racks on top of the bookcases, and they were easy to reach that way. Nice. The DVD ones were 80, 80 inches, and you had to have a step stool to get up to the big pan. So we eventually learned mm. to store the seasonal ones there and, and bring those down to a more convenient spot. But now we have a whole room for cake pans, and we do st have them organized by season, like um, Halloween, Christmas, uh, graduation, Easter, all that are all stored by by. Uh, season now, which has helped us a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to say that all the cake pans have been donated. We have not purchased a single cake pan. Once the word gets mm -hmm. out that you have or are starting a collection like this, it really begins to roll. So be prepared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may be shocked at how fast those cake pans start coming in or any kind of collection like that comes in. Mm -hmm. I know other libraries do, like um, tool libraries and even seed libraries and things like that. So mm -hmm. it all depends on what you think is going to be best for your area and your patrons, what they like. Um, did you have a question, yeah. Krista? Um, no, I, I just heard some libraries where, yeah, they've, um, they started one of these collections themselves and then uh, just community members in the in the town have purchased a particular cake because it's you know the character their their child wants a birthday cake for, and they know you know children next year they'll want something different, so it's like a one shot deal, and then they just bring it you know once they make the one cake, then they bring it to the library and it's kind of an ongoing thing. The next year, then they can donate the next one that the child no longer right. you know is no longer interested in. <laughs> yep. That's exactly mm -hmm. right, and we have people ask about. Well, did you ever do it? You have a door explorer, and we say no. So then, a couple of days later, they might bring in door Diego because they know that we don't have one, and that's the popular one at this point. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have had more people tell me is, we're happy to donate these to you because they're awkward to store. We don't have any place mm -hmm. to store them. You guys can store them, and we know where we can get them if we need it. Exactly. Yep. So it's it's easy that way. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question on the line. Um, someone did just type in, they want to know, you said that um, you put your barcodes directly on the cake pans. What did you use to actually attach them? How did you do that? Um, um, that was actually next to my list of stuff to talk about. Okay. A little bit about cataloging. Um, what we finally found to do is we bought an engraver and just engraved the barcode number on the cake pan. It's there permanently. Oh, nice. Okay. And we don't have to worry about assigning a temporary barcode or losing the barcode or whatever, so that is engraved right on there. And I don't know about everybody's cataloging module on their system, but ours actually has one that's called Mixed Media, and it has a little beaters on it, mixer beaters. Mm. So that's what we use for to designate what the cake pens are. They're under Mixed Media. Um, we assign a number, so it goes cake pan, and you're showing some of them like Abby Cadabby, cake pan angel, mm -hmm. things like that. And then when we go to the title, we just put angel. We don't even put cake pan or anything like that. In the subject heading, we'll put definitely cake pan has to go in the subjects, but it might be we have a lot of other things like about Mickey Mouse, so it would be Mickey Mouse, fictitious character in there, or Minnie Mouse, or Door of the Explorer. If it's a Christmas tree, Christmas angel, we'll put Christmas in there as a subject heading too. 
the good thing about these kind of collections is you can pretty much do whatever you want, however you want to do it, just so it's easy for your patrons to use. The easier it is, the better they like it. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say that no matter how many cake fans we have, and we, in the fall, had a, over 200 donated to us again. We did end up giving over 125 of them to another library because we still, even with the room we have, we still don't have a lot of room for cake fans, and mm -hmm. we don't keep many duplicates except things that are real popular, like graduation or uh, Door the Explorer, things like that. So we try not to keep too many duplicate ones. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about with getting donations. Is if you have something already in your collection, is you know, with you know, certain ones that are the most popular, you you might do more than one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Harry Potter was real popular for a while, and we mm -hmm. had three of yeah. those. We're down to one of those. I mean, and also don't be afraid to weed out as you find that the cake fans are losing their popularity. We had, like, for some reason, within the space of a year, we had four or five Fred Flintstones donated to us. <laughs> we only kept one of them. And you'll be the bear, you know. They'll be checked out. They don't get checked out much, but they do get checked out occasionally. So we tend to keep one of everything, at least. Um, as I said, some cake fans are much more popular. It depends on the time of year. Uh, so we do double up on some of them. Um, just lost my train of thought. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, that's OK. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter how many cake fans you have. There's going to be one that you don't have. It doesn't. And, but about the time you say you don't have it, it comes wandering in again. So just be patient. Don't go out and buy it just because some patron wants this specific cake fan. It will come to you, and if they want it bad enough, they're the ones that will bring it to you after they've bought it and used it. Another thing I would suggest is um, set the fines high on these. We check our cake pans out for a week, and we charge a dollar a day. Mm. They have to have an incentive to bring them back, because they tend to keep these for quite a while. Um, and we also set our fine limit. Pretty low. It's only two fifty after two hundred. After two dollars and fifty cents, you can't check anything out. You can't use the computers and stuff. So we're kind of mean about that type of thing. <laughs> but setting it the fine high gives you incentive because there's a lot of times when, like, the scouts have the cake walks and the schools have the cake walks. People come in and check out twenty cake pans at a time, and don't get the cake pans back for a week after they're due. So that's a dollar a day, that maybe five dollars at twenty. So that mounts up all fast and they learn real mm -hmm. fast that they can't you know, they've got to get the cake back. Get it back quickly, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do that. Um, we have one patron who um, comes in and checks out cake pans whenever they go visit their grandchildren in Colorado so they can oh. go out and and mm -hmm. make birthday cakes for them because they go out for each one of the kids' birthday, so they just grab a cake pan or two and and take it with them. And and we can, I'm, as I'm talking about that, that reminded me, we can also set extended periods of checkout for the cake pans or any other material we have if people ask us, and we're happy to do that. You just need to know know that that's what we they want to do. And. Another great thing about this cake pan collection is we have moms and even some dads that will come in and check out cake pans just because they want to bake a cake with their uh, kids. We have a couple patron or parents that come in about every two or three weeks and check out a different cake pan because the kids are ready to have another cake and a different cake, different cake pan. Oh, that's nice. That is. Mm -hmm. um, some um, pros is we get quite a few new patrons that have heard about our cake pan collection. We have probably two or three calls a week saying, I hear you have cake pans at your library. Do you really? And can I check them out? And, <laughs> you know, sure, come on in. And we get, them, get the people in with the cake pans, and they find out all the all other services we offer, and they just keep coming back. Uh, we can interlibrary loan the cake pans. That's a little harder to do, but we will <laughs> definitely interlibrary loan the cake pans all over. So 
Oh, that's good. Somebody had just typed that question in a minute or two ago and wanted oh. to know if you interlibrary loaned them. <laughs> Great, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do, do you have special um, packaging to send them out, or how do you uh, uh, no, just box them up? Box them up, pack, packing stuff around it, box them up and send them out. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that there's some libraries around here that aren't happy with the open access and being able to check out cake pans from our libraries and return them to their libraries because then they have to figure out how to pack them up or get them mm -hmm. over here, you know, they're, they're in their Dropbox and they're just not used mm -hmm. to dealing with that type of collection like we are. Mm -hmm. so sometimes they don't, aren't real thrilled with having to return them to us, but it all works out in the long run. Mm -hmm. So you would interlibrary loan them for, to anybody? Sure. Like anywhere just in the country? Oh, okay. Just yeah. On. Yep, just go on and we will be happy to send them out to you. Nice. Just let us know. We probably would need to check them out for longer than the week. So just to right to include the mailing, the right, the time you know, to get through the post the postal right, service. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. And if anybody wants it, they need to plan ahead on when they want that cake pan. Mm hmm Right. So if they need it on January second, they probably won't get it now. Mm hmm So I'd say give us at least two weeks advance notice for getting getting a cake pan to you. Mm. Um, it's this is a collection, like I said, that's free, so it hasn't cost us anything to start this collection. And those are the best collections, aren't they, for libraries? <laughs> yes. You gotta love them, yeah. And it's a great service to the patrons because these designer cake pans are expensive. They are just expensive. We put in as a cost for us uh, ten dollars to replace a cake pan, and that's just because they're donated. Uh, I'm thinking most cake pans are range anywhere between fifteen and twenty dollars. Brand new. To actually buy one. Yeah, looking yeah. on the um here's the Wilton page. Um here's a bear. What is this one? Well this is a more expensive one. Thirty dollars for a stand up bear. I okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's different. That one, by the way. We have the football helmet. We have the football but here, just a plain flat football, thirteen ninety nine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yep. more more common. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You can find the cake pans like at any hobby store, even like Walmart and places like that. If you're desperate and need to buy a cake pan for your collection, mm -hmm. I, I would definitely not advise that. But you know, you may want to do that. Um, we've now just started having donations of, you know, like those the popular ones now are the cake pops. Oh yes, mm -hmm. on a stick and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten now the um, ones that are like you can do like six small cakes at a time, or the cookie sheets that are like you can do do those six at a time. Put a <laughs> it sounds kind of rude. Put a stick in it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, and then you can do the cake pops or the cookies on a stick or whatever that way. Yeah, this one be, here, the, the Christmas tree cookie sheet, is that what that would be, where you do multiple uh -huh, ones that are tree-shaped? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, those seem to be the popular ones that are getting donated to us right now, and it's that's really good because, like I said, the real, those cake pops are amazing things. We had them for our grand opening along with the cake, and the pops went faster than the cake did, so. <laughs> Which is okay, so it was clean up for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we do at least two or three cake and cookie decorating programs a year because of this collection. Mm. So it's good for doing programs and getting people in to come to the programs. We did one two Saturdays ago with a cake, cake and cookie decorating uh, program, and it was a family one. So the parents came with the kids, and we did it. That We found that instead of... A, Doing cakes or even cupcakes, it's easier with the cake decorating classes to just do a big, huge cookie. That way they can wipe or, wipe or eat the frosting and then start all over to practice with the different tips and everything. We do not have any of the tips or anything like that, any of those kind of supplies, because they disappear faster than we can possibly keep up with them. Mm -hmm. So we just have the cake pans, and I would advise against doing something like that, doing the tips or anything like that. Yeah, too many small pieces there, yeah. So people, with the, you didn't tell people who they're coming to the program to bring along their own of all that extra, anything well, they'd like to have? No. or Depends on who you have doing your class. Now, we have 
several volunteers that do the cake decorating professionally. Mm -hmm. And they, they also, it's nice, they do the program, decorating programs for us for free, which is really great. But they have all their own supplies and they just bring them. So it was mm, okay, them. right. Yeah. Um, uh, we've done like tea parties and things like that, that we've actually done this decorating as part of the activities for the tea parties for the programs. Uh, so there's lots of ways you can incorporate the cake pans and things like that into programs for you and from adults right through the to the kids. Oh, yeah. Um, and the best thing about, best pro about the cake pan collection is, if I'm the one that's checking out the cake pans, I always say, and you need to bring the director back a piece of cake. <laughs> anything but coconut. I am good with anything but coconut. And I'd say about once out of every five times, I do get a piece of cake. <laughs> nice. So, Bring a sample to us so we know how well you how you used it. Yes. Uh, you like it, Chip. And we've had we have people bring in pictures of their cakes, how they decorated it, and everything. So mm -hmm. that is, you know, it's just something that really attracts people to the library. Some cons: mm -hmm. you can't keep everybody happy. You never have the cake pan they want. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, and then the you know. They're just the patrons are unhappy basically most of the time anyway. Uh, and it does take up quite a bit of space. The pans come up missing probably more than any other part of our collection. Hmm. I don't know, you know even with check, getting them checked out and us calling them, sending them letters, overdue notices and stuff, they just don't seem to think that they need to bring them back. So be aware of that. And I don't know whether it's just our library. I've not heard you know, any comments from anybody else. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, actually, someone did just come in earlier, and I was going to mention it, but I hadn't yet. Um, from Library in Colorado says that they have, they have a cake pan collection. They check them out for free also, and they give them two weeks, and they've never had a problem with anyone returning um, them. Isn't that so, strange? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And like I said, I think mostly it's people that are doing it and checking out 10 or more cake pans at a time for a project they're doing. Um, hmm. I'm not sure about that, how that goes. Um, and you can never guess which cake pan is going to be the most popular. Yeah. Ever. It doesn't matter. You know, we have six different dinosaurs, and one of them, there's one of them that's most popular. And <laughs> the people will wait to check out that one rather than check out a different dinosaur that's available to them. I have no clue on why that is. Like I said... If you wait long enough, your cake pan's going to come in. So, I um, I can't remember what I was. At. One other thing I was going to say, and I kind of did rush through it. So please, people, ask questions. And what I'm going to say is, don't be afraid to start any unusual collection. If it doesn't work, you can always just delete the whole thing and try a different one. Yeah. It's nice to be adventurous. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of people have asked um, see about getting um, cleaning them. Do you have an issue with them? Are you being returned dirty, or do you have some sort of process when they come in that you guys clean them to make sure the next time they go out? How do you all? How do you deal with all that? We had issues with a couple patrons where they didn't get them cleaned, you know, there's all those little grooves and stuff. Yeah, and I, that's the thing too, I can imagine they'd be really hard to take care of no matter what, yeah. And we don't clean them. We just can't, we, they've gotten so, that we just, you know, we haven't had this in years and years. We called them and said, you need to come back and get this cake pan and clean it or you're not going to be able to get a cake pan checked out again. You know, and I suppose that's mm -hmm. kind of rude, but it's effective. Okay, so you 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 it's the responsibility. It's just like when they return a book. If they return it in any sort of uh, damaged or dirty state, you know they're responsible yeah. for returning it the same way they picked it up. I see. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yep. Uh, I will say one other thing is we have switched from the Dewey Decimal System to subject-based cataloging, and that has helped a lot throughout the whole library. But it's really helped with how we catalog our uh, cake band collection.
Ah, someone asked a question. I think they came in late. They weren't here at the beginning. You'd mentioned um, adding photos of the pans that you started doing that to the catalog. Someone wants to know if you ever considered adding photos, which he said, or photos of the completed cakes to the website or social media, like out to Pinterest or somewhere, um, to like promote the the collection. I don't know that you'd have to have people. Uh, when patrons have brought in pictures of their cakes, we put them on the web page for a month or so. We're in the process. We've only got two or three pictures taken because we just found out with our um, system that we can actually take pictures. So eventually we will have pictures of all 300 cake pans taken. It just takes forever to do. Do you know of um, any that are in here now that I could possibly find in the collect in your catalog to show? No. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. Chad had showed me what they were, and I've totally blanked out on what what cake pans they are. Oh, I think maybe so one of them might be Mickey Mouse. I'm not sure. That might be one she was taking a picture of. Uh, let's see if we can find... Oops. We got a couple of different Mickey Mouse ones here. That's okay. Let's see what we can find. I don't know if I have to go into the actual record itself to. I think you do. See if there's one. Oh, that's a cookie sheet one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, anymore. Okay. Well, they're working I on it, so it right will now. be there, yeah. Yep. And then, now what about, now this is actually a good idea, you know, having them um, take pictures or when you have your programs as well and posting them on your website or your Facebook page or something. And, yeah, we do it on both the website and the Facebook. Okay, cool. Because I know you do have, yeah, a Facebook page here that you link to off of your... Um, we haven't tried Pinterest yet, but that's something we've been talking about. Yeah, oh, things. there's our girls. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you had anything. Here's ah cake cookie decorating event. Here's something that you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one other question we have come in. I'm not sure if you know about this, but I'm sure other people may. Um, do you know of any other unusual collections? They said they've heard of toy collections and puzzles, um, but this one has not heard of tools. I've heard of libraries doing tool collections. Um, as yeah. well. And I will say that we've tried a puzzle collection, we've tried a tool collection, because we thought, well, you know, people living in apartments, especially since we live so close to the university, there would probably be quite a few kids living here that didn't have tools. That was one that we tried and it didn't mm -hmm. work and it was just taking up space, so we dropped that collection. We tried the puzzle collection uh, and you end up losing pieces all the time. And if you yeah. have like a 200 piece collection, it's not worth it. What we've done is, especially in the winter, we just set a puzzle out on a table in the library and patrons just come mm -hmm. in and sit for a while and fill in the pieces where they can. And it, sometimes it's taken them two or three days doing all the patrons. Sometimes it takes them, you know, maybe a day to fill it, to do the puzzle. But that seems to work pretty good that way. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, oh, a few a couple of years ago, we had someone else on Encompass Live talking about un unusual collections, like l lots of different kinds out there. Um, but here's one I did find. I just did a search, as you saw, library tool collection, Gross Point Public Library. Um, and this is very interesting. You read this on their page. Started in the fall of 1943 as a project of the Boys Work Committee of the Gross Point Rotary Club. And now they are continuing it, and here is all the different kind of tools that they have and they can check out. And like you said, it's going to depend on what is a need in your community, if there's something that people are asking about, or if you notice. I know, I think one of our libraries here in um, Nebraska, might be Omaha possibly, does um, the chart, the things to test your electricity and test things like yeah. that that they check out. Um, I see this one so. has a battery charger to check out. That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I was... City and Coralville both have art collections they check out, and they check them out for a month. And that was popular 
few years ago, but they're kind of they're not accepting any more uh, donations of art or anything. They are keeping the collection, but they rarely get checked out anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know cake pans is something that has become, um, I don't know if you saw it popular, but known. Like here, there was an article in Library Journal magazine in 2012, Let Them Lend to Cake Pans. Mm -hmm. But um, they can just see here lots of other libraries that are doing it. Uh, cake pan, cake pans, cake pans. <laughs> um, yeah. Like said, hey, I this is our Seward Memorial Library. You were just talking about them. Yeah, see, now they there have you the go. pictures. That's what we're going yeah. to start doing mm -hmm. that. That's cool. Uh, we also have small cake pans donated to us, like the numbers, like 1, 2, 3, up to 10. Mm -hmm. We have found keeping those in a large bag, laundry bag. Well, not large, but like one of those laundry, laundry bags so that they don't get lost, wander all over. Oh, Dora. Darth Vader's another popular one. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. They, uh, it's it, better to keep the small ones, and we have many ones, too, like mini Mickey Mouse, mini Christmas tree. We keep those all together in laundry bags mm -hmm. because it's just easier and less hassle with them trying not getting lost. Yeah. So it has a lot of the here's same a, ones. Here's a set them. of the fluted mold, set of eight, so I'm sure they would all come together. Yeah. yeah. We and here's another thing, the cookie the pops that you were talking about. Here's a heart yep, one. Yep. yep. Those we have. We have tried the um, jello molds. Tried mm -hmm. those for a while. Mm -hmm. Nobody seems to want those either. Hmm. It, they may be popular with somebody else, but I was just looking at the horseshoe. That was one of the jello molds, and we had a big trout jello mold. Um, <laughs> They just didn't go over here. So mostly it's going to be experimenting at your library to see what will work for you, mm -hmm. as usual. That lamb and like one is a hard one to do, by the way. Which one? The lamb. There's a lamb one, and that's a 3D one. Yes, the one that stands out, yep. The 3D ones, you have to be careful because they come with clips, and you've got to, what we do is we keep the clips at, I'm glad you're showing these because then I can remember some stuff I haven't talked about. Mm -hmm. um, we keep the clips at our circulation desk because like this lamb one, this fine lamb one. Because um, it has a front and a back and you've got to keep them together somehow, right? Yeah, and the clips disappear. So mm -hmm. we just keep them at the desk and when they check them out, we'll give them a bag of clips to take with them. We thought about, cool. at one point, starting a uh, collection of, I don't know whether you call it equipment, things you might need with pets, like a collar and a leash until you can get one, mm. um, training, training equipment, things like that. Uh, then we decided, uh, no. <laughs> if you're getting a pet, you should be able to afford to do one of your own, do everything of your own. So. Mm. And sometimes depending on when you're getting it, like we've adopted, uh, we get our cat um, cats from the Humane Society, they usually yeah. give you uh, some starter stuff, toys, yeah. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Well, I don't know if anybody out there has an unusual collection that they'd like to talk about, because I'd be sure be interested in that. Yeah. Well, is anyone... to try anything. <laughs> We're happy to try anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does anybody else on the line um, have something that you guys are doing? Um, I know we had the one library that I misspoke earlier. I thought it, I was reading off of the wrong thing. It was actually a library in Iowa um, that was talking about how they lend them out for two weeks. Um, and... Uh, I haven't had any problems with having them brought back. But as we saw, there's lots of libraries doing it. Anybody on the line who has any sort of special collections you guys have done, uh, you can type in and let us know. Because I know we've heard about toys and um, tools. Oh. I'm trying to think of any other ones. Yeah. And the seed lending, of course, seeds. Um, we actually, um, our South Sioux City Public Library here in Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. Um, did an Encompass Live session for us. Um, and they actually did, there's a group called Seed Savers based out of Iowa, uh -huh. where, where you're from, D, who is the organization that um, got them set up and going with that. So they run their yeah. programs and help them out with that. So we seeds that you can a, lend. did a session for us at our ARSL conference. Mm -hmm. That yep. was interesting. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something I'd like to try because here in North Liberty they have um, – Plots they rent out, 
in the summertime, like for I think ten dollars for the summer. So it would be kind of interesting, just especially for people that you know, seeds are getting kind of expensive anymore. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think Salsa City has a lot of heirloom seeds. Yes, they do. Yeah, and with that one, I always wondered how is that supposed to work with people who are. <laughs> um, they when after they grow the seeds, then they, they the part of the deal is bring back what the ones off your plants to keep the collection yeah. going. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. But I was thinking maybe you know with the patrons we have around here, if they donate a pack of seeds, we could get something like that started too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that would be easy to store. I can see storing those yeah. better than cake bands, but yeah. Uh, here's your library. Um, Solon uh, Public Library in Iowa says they have a wooden dinosaur collection. Oh, yeah. They aren't for checkout, but can be reserved for programs. They go to many schools and libraries in our area. They have two over 200 of wooden dinosaurs. Wow. Hi, Chris. That's pretty awesome. Yes, that's Chris Brown. <laughs> I was wondering if um, you guys would know. They're only nine miles away from us. Uh, okay. Uh, and Chris has one of her library patrons makes all the dinosaurs for them, wooden dinosaurs. And we've had... Him bring his collection here to us to, to for display. The kids love it, mm -hmm. and they're not small dinosaurs; they're big ones. Oh wow! Okay. And someone else says a few libraries that have circulate telescopes or bicycles. Oh. Um, and the Kilgore Library, which is here, Kilgore Memorial Library in York, Nebraska, has a cry cut machine and various cartridges for checkout, as well as uh, kilowatt home electricity monitor kits to check and see if you're having you most efficient, doing most efficient with your electricity. Yep. I knew there was somewhere we have, in Nebraska that did we that. We have the die cut machine. I never thought about making that available to the patrons, but that's that's an interesting. Yeah, we have one that goes around to our libraries. But I've heard, I started hearing now that some libraries promoting. We have this if you want to do it for any of your own crafts or doing it home with your kids or at the school or something. That the libraries can provide that. Yeah. So I have a question for everybody out there. My technology services librarian is writing a grant. Hopefully, we'll get it to purchase a three D printer. Mm -hmm. Does anybody out there have one, and how does that work, making it available to your patrons and all that kind of stuff? Any policy on it? Good question. Does anybody on the line have a 3D printer? Um, we'll give a few seconds here to... We actually did just... I'm trying to look at here... Um, Mm. Someone, did, one of our staff here, says that all the ones that they know about are for in library use only. That you wouldn't check out the printer. Obviously, they're yeah. kind of large well, nowadays. I would think, um, yeah, but they, people can come into the library. Um, and actually, we did do. And here, I'll bring it up. I was just making sure I found the right thing. Oh, why did I do that? Da, da, da. We did just a few weeks ago, and that's probably Michael, our technology innovation librarian on the line. We did a tech talk with him about uh, maker spaces, and we do have a library here. Um, Gordon from Gordon Wyant from Bellevue Public Library, which is here in Nebraska, that they did yeah. also wrote a grant for a 3D printer that they have. Um, My concern would be, what do you allow them to print, like? I would certainly think not anything dealing with weapons or anything like that. Oh, sure. Yeah, you'd have to have monitor what's going on. I would, um, I'm hoping that I can get some kind of policy from somebody that we wouldn't have to start from the beginning with that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Well, look for our Gordon. He's very helpful. He's our current outgoing president of our Nebraska Library Association okay. at the moment. But Bellevue Public Library, Gordon, he'd be happy to talk to you about it, I'm sure. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Uh, and then for, um, Michael does say, the libraries I've talked to have a no weapons and no adult items policies. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I never thought of that. Oh, goodness, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and someone was asking um, the seed saving for libraries. We do have our recording of that for when South Sioux City Public Library was here on the show, um, which was just uh, earlier this year. Um, so if anyone's interested in finding out more about that, um, we have the recording there that you can go ahead and watch and see what they were doing and how they set up that. Where are we at here? Okay. Okay, anybody have any other questions or comments or thoughts on uh, cool collections that you've come across?
No. Okay, anything else, Dee, that you wanted to make sure you uh, mentioned? I think I've included or... everything. If you guys have any <laughs> questions, you know where to find mm -hmm. me. Well, at least until yep. December 31st, and I'm retiring, but... Oh, really? Somebody around oh. here will be here for seven years. So, yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Well, congratulations. I hope you enjoy your retirement. So you yeah, have until the end of the month to uh, yeah. pick Dee's brain about this. <laughs> I'm sure someone, as you guys had this collection for so many years, someone you'll be continuing with. Oh, yeah. No problem. Any of my yeah. staff can yeah. help so you with break this. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Not a problem. Well, thank you for right. having me. I enjoyed doing this. And yes. Thank you very everybody much. Everybody starts some kind of special collection. It doesn't need to be cake fans, but it's always mm -hmm. good to have some kind of collection that draws your draws patron into into your library. So. Mm -hmm. See what's in what's in need. See what people are talking about just out in the community right. and what they might want. Um, or if, like you said, if somebody suddenly has a set of something, like you got a huge donation, mm -hmm. and I know um, that uh, Tool Collection said it was donation too. If someone just says, "I've got this stuff, a collection of things, and I don't know what to do with it, but I'm willing to give it to you," and you can say, "Well, it's free." like yours was, let's start it and figure out how to check them out and see what happens. Yeah, and if mm -hmm. it doesn't work, try something mm -hmm. else. Yep. It's not going to hurt anything. Yep, you can always find somewhere else to donate it to. Like you said, some of your exactly. duplicates or extras, you've, mm -hmm. there's other libraries in the area that you've said, here, yep. you guys can now have one, too, <laughs> um, yep. have your own this collection. This is actually one of the libraries that has some of our cake pens, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Share amongst everyone in town, exactly. in the area, absolutely. Exactly. And like we said, we'll be happy to interlibrary loan them, but give us a mm -hmm. little bit of time to be sure and get them to you. Yeah, that's great to know that if you know, if your own local library doesn't have any of this yet and you're looking for something, um, yeah, take a look at what they have here. They own library loaning it. And I don't know if every library would do that necessarily because, like you said, there is the cost of shipping it and boxing it and making sure it gets places safely. Um, so not every public library may be doing the interlibrary loaning, but you guys in North Liberty, Iowa are, so... Oh, Chris says, yes, thank you, Dee, for the ones that you've donated <laughs> to them. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, yeah. All right, well, it doesn't look like any any urgent issues or questions have come in while we've been here. So, um, so I think um, we will um, wrap it up for the morning. The, um, this is great. Do you see how you guys have been doing this and pulling it off? I know, like I said, we've had some people talk about special collections before, but it's really good to see the details and the down and dirty and how you specifically did this yeah. one and how you're getting it into your catalog and, and you know, navigating the whole process. Yep. So that and was I great. I want to wish everybody happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays, everyone. Order some Christmas uh, uh, cake pans from the library. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have right. them. Yes. Stop by and pick them up. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Dee. Thank you, everyone, for attending this morning. That will wrap it up for our um, to bake or not to bake a library cake pan collection. Um, it has been recorded, so it will be available afterwards. Um, after it processes a little later this afternoon, you'll be notified. Um, I hope you join us next week when it is our monthly tech talk uh, once a month. Michael Sowers, who's the technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, comes on and does a techie or techie related show. And next week he has a friend of ours, J.D. Thomas, who's going to be on talking about uh, Shogus, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but um, uh, to provide uh, something for non-coders to use, make things social media friendly um, from your um, URLs to make it a little simpler. They'll explain it all next week. <laughs> I won't be here. I will be away for Christmas. And just to be aware, you can see here, next week and the week after, and Compass Live is usually on Wednesdays, but next Wednesday is Christmas. It's a holiday. The Wednesday after that is New Year's Day. It is also a holiday for us here at the state, at the Library Commission. So next week and um, the first week of January, and Compass Live will be on Thursday, not Wednesday. Same time. 10 a.m., but it will be on Thursday, and we've got that uh, very well notified there for you. So just to be aware of that, next week we still have our Tech Talk, just bumping it a day ahead, and our one for the first week in January, Beyond Mark, um, BibFrame, and the Future of Bibliographic Data. This is Emily Nimsekant, our cataloging librarian, will be doing a session. Same thing, it will be on Thursday um, rather than Wednesday because we are closed. After that, we go back to our regular Wednesdays. So hopefully you'll join us um, for our future shows. Thank you very much for being here today, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.